Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of Dear Asphur. Let's continue onwards up the path and see what's in store for us. So we found a stone circle down there. Whoa. And I had a strange sound come off one of the rocks as well. I can hear that cave we went in. Unless it's just the wind blowing through this section here. Okay, let's go to this dead end. Well, it kind of looks like a dead end. Let's see what happens. Oh, it wraps around. Okay. Okay, we're loading the next section. <coughs> Dear Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimetre using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. So which way are we going? Left or right? I can see some ships down here. Abandoned. Let's go down here. Find out what's going on. Like sand dunes? And loads of... Little bits of litter everywhere. This is like a playground. If I'm if I come to a place like this in real life with like the boats, I would be like, yay! And like jumping all over them. Old containers. I just hear the creaking sound. There. <coughs> Excuse me. a light out at sea there. There must be a hole in the bottom of the boat. How else could new hermits have arrived? No, we can't go this way. Well, I don't think so. What's this? There's that symbol again with the two arrows coming off it. It's pointing at a ship. Like an image of a ship, maybe? Can I not get up here? No, looks like we can't get there. Let's make our way around to the path that we um, chose not to go. Go down. We'll go past the other ships as we go there. Past the other ships, rather. This kind of reminds me slightly of Proteus too. Apart from that game is um, just music and observation based. But this one's got the poetry aspect. 
Not the 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 uber detail, but something about this game that reminds me of it. I really want to get on that ship. I really don't think there's a way though. Okay, we're back on the path. I'm just gonna shut my bedroom window, someone's being loud outside. That's better. <clears throat> okay. Well, we're kind of going away from the beacon now. Just the path to An imagined answer phone message. The tires are flat, the wheel spins loosely, and the brake fluid has run like ink over this map, staining the landmarks and rendering the coastline mute, compromised. Where you saw galaxies, I saw only bruises cut into the cliff by my lack of sobriety. Hmm. Well, this place, this end appears to stop, so I think the path doubles up by here and goes higher up. Unless it meets back at the beginning. I was still thinking about that symbol on the rocks we found over there. Like, what could it mean? Maybe it means that there's a dead end, because there's an arrow with a line through it. And then there's arrows pointing off the dead end arrow, if you know what I mean. Because I think a dead end is an arrow with a line across the top. Like no, no go. Well, that's where we came from. Most definitely. Follow the path down and around here. <clears throat> Along here. It's like the symbol we saw in the sand. Oh, the steering wheel. And I think that was implying where to, like, to double back on yourself and how to get out of that place. Maybe this arrow up here has some similar meaning. Oh, unless... I had kidney stones and you visited me in the hospital. After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anaesthetic, your outline and your speech both blurred. Now my stones have grown into an island and made their escape, and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. By the car of a drunk. I can't believe I didn't notice this bit earlier. Okay, well this is breaking off again into two paths. Down here. Is this what Paul saw through his windscreen? Not Lot's wife looking over her shoulder, but a scar in the hillside falling away to black forever. Damn. That is kind of creepy down there. Wouldn't want to fall down there. I think I see a hut. Okay, the paths meet. I'm assuming you missed that poetry bit if you we took the top road. I've begun my ascent on the green slope of the western side. I've looked deep into the mountain from the shaft and understood that I must go up and then find the way under. I will stash the last vestiges of my civilization in the stone walls and work deeper from there. 
drawn by the aerial and the cliff edge. There is some form of rebirth waiting for me there. Okay, this is kind of creepy. There's like needles and a putri dish, is that what you call it? Patri dish. And medical stuff. If this place was abandoned, like, why would this still be blood on cloth? I'll read that. Well, we are moving in the direction of the beacon. Bothy was constructed originally in the early 1700s. By then, shepherding had formalized into a career. The first habitual shepherd was a man called Jacobson from a lineage of migratory Scandinavians. He was not considered a man of breeding by the mainlanders. He came here every summer whilst building the Bothy, hoping eventually that becoming a man of property would secure him a wife and a lineage. Donnelly records that it did not some disease from his malcontented goats and died two years after completing it. There was no one to carve white lines into the cliff for him either. It's another symbol. Okay, let's check out the house. The old house, anyway. Inventory. A trestle table we spread wallpaper on in our first home. A folding chair, I laughed at you for bringing camping in the lakes. I was uncomfortable later and you laughed then. This diary, a bed with the broken springs. Once asleep you have to remember not to dream. A change of clothes, Donnelly's book stolen from Edinburgh Library on the way here. I will burn them all on the last morning and make an aerial of my own. Damn. He's reciting everything we find but kind of relating it back into sections of his life. Let's see what's at the back. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Seagulls scare me. The old garden. Oh, look. There's another symbol. <clears throat> so, is this a path going down here? Oh, it's a cave. That is kind of scary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me, Monsieur. I wouldn't want to be falling down there. In a footnote, the editor comments that at this point Donnelly was going insane as syphilis tore through his system like a drunk driver. He's not to be trusted. Many of his claims are unsubstantiated, and although he does paint a colourful picture, much of what he says may have been derived directly from his fever. 
But I've been here, and I know, as Donnelly did, that this place is always half-imagined. Even the rocks and caves will shimmer and blur with the right eyes. Hmm. Looks like we're going the right way. <clears throat> Looks like it's going to be another stroll along the beach. They found Jakobsen in early spring. The thaw had only just come. Even though he'd been dead nearly seven months, his body had been frozen right down to the nerves and had not even begun to decompose. His fingernails were raw and bitten to the quick. They found the phosphorescent moss that grows in the caves deep under the nails. Whatever he'd been doing under the island when his strength began to fail is lost. He'd struggled halfway up the cliff again, perhaps in a delirium, perhaps trying to reach the Bothy's fire before curling into a stone and expiring. Damn. That sounds gruesome. There's an old boat here. An old boat skeleton. There's a cave ahead. Maybe it'll lead us through to a, a new area. But there's a massive chasm here that I'm tempted to walk. Climbing down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. The skin has turned a bright, tight pink, and the pain is crashing in on waves, winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggled back to the bothy to rest, but it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. They will keep me lucid for my final ascent. Shit, man, I just heard something through that. I think this is a dead end. Was I perhaps... Ooh, what's this? Suitcase. Was I purpose... Was I meant to jump down here? You can see that some something did fall. There's marks there. Like I said, we could possibly be reciting our own story. Okay, we're gonna go in the big cave. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna call this episode good, guys, by here. Uh, make sure you come back next time for some more Dear Esfa or Esfa. I'm pretty sure it's Asper, and I shall be seeing you soon. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.